talk to a lot of powerlifters, and so like they train with like our companies. Oh yeah. I know we do percentages. What's really? My way works way better. <laughs> I promise yeah. you. I promise you. Yeah, po powerlifting in all sports kind of just go with whatever's popular, right? So the current thing, like like. 20 years ago, if you were a power lifter, what you did is you started with sets of eight and you tapered down to doubles and then you did the meet. So, you know, that's like the classic power lifting split, so to speak. And then after that, you know, probably in the last 10, 15 years uh, with Mike Tuscher and stuff, then RPE became popular. And there's been like different, different things like daily undulating periodization and all these different things. They all do the same, they all do the exact same thing. Um, the, so, so again, like we're dealing with power lifters. We're dealing with people who lift competitively, who are driven and are driven specifically to see the numbers on those three lifts go up. All right. So it's going to happen if they're in the gym and they're training hard and they're motivating each other, the weight on the bar is going to go up. Like it almost doesn't matter what, it almost doesn't matter what you do. Um, so, so with that, <laughs> with that said, it's like, the, the uh, RPE thing is really appealing because it seems like you're doing something more complicated than it is. Um, and it also allows you to just, the, the, it works well for people who are competitive because, because it forces them to auto, to regulate, right? Because like I was saying, sometimes you have to pull people back. So if you're telling somebody all the time to do RPE 8, that means they're not gonna do RPE 10, which is what power lifters want to do. They wanna, they wanna go hard all the time. Okay, so, um, to me, that shit is w way too much to think about. If I have to tell you, like, do this, do this lift at RPE whatever, then I have to look at it and I have to judge from a video whether or not it was RPE whatever, and then you have to tell me, and then you and I have to agree what that means. There's way too many, way too many steps in there that things can get lost. All right. So um, the way I the way I do things for advanced lifters, for so so for Haley, um, you guys have done a little bit of this is. Uh, Every week she shoots for a PR or a very, very heavy single on a variation of the squat, deadlift, or bench. All right, so instead of worrying about the load, which is what RPE does, it tries to, you're trying to vary intensity and also you're doing variations. Um, we're just gonna stick to as close to the parent movement as possible, but go really, really heavy. The lift limits the stress. So like on your, the days that you squat your heavy single, that's the heaviest you're gonna squat, right? Now you only see that once every four weeks or six weeks or whatever it is. So she only squats the heaviest thing that she can do every four to six weeks. She only deadlifts the heaviest deadlift she can do every four to six weeks. So, but in between there, she's doing a heavy pause squat. She's doing a heavy rack pull, a heavy, uh, I don't think I've had to do halting deadlifts yet, but there's heavy variations, which she's doing them as heavy as she can, but they're not stress. They're not as stressful because they're variations, right? So, so, um, in my opinion, it works better because when, whenever you get ready for the meet, all I have to do is rearrange where your squat and your bench are to line up with the meet. And then you're always, you're never having to peak. Like if you heard the, the, the yeah. concept of peaking, you never have to peak, you're always peaked. Like all I have to do is plug in a squat and then you're, you're ready to go. Train peaked. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So there's no, there's no peaking, there's no, like, there's no periods of time where you're gonna feel like you're just totally beat up. And if you are, then then all we have to do is just change a couple of things and you can just kind of keep going. Yeah, I've even had people, I will usually have people do their uh, do their openers. I think I did this with you last time, do their openers. Uh, so instead of deadlifting, I had you rack pull, but it's the meat, the, it's the, the week of the meat for double, totally fine. Yeah. Right, again, if we haven't like done all this work to get you to this level for six weeks or whatever, and then, and then like expect it to just be only this little window in time where you can perform, that's a, I think that's an inefficient way to, 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 to program. Right? I think you should just be going all the time. And by the way, this isn't like new. This is like how the, the, the West Side people train, the West Side guys train. Um, I just do it more reasonably like with, and without all the drugs, right? So it's like fewer variations. And so that's their approach is always, you're always like always hitting really, really heavy, always doing a lot of frequency, a lot of work. So it's just a different, uh, different way to skin the cat, right? So. Yeah, and by the way, the West Side thing was super super popular like maybe 15 years ago. Yeah. So that's the way everybody did everything then. So it, it just kind of goes in phases. So when you start beating all, everybody, they'll they'll start paying attention. Well, you also should never really be like shocked on a meet. Like right. they're like doing all this lower weight, and then they think like some magic happened. They're gonna go in and like hit a PR. Like every time I program someone with a 
meat. We know it's exactly like, what's going to happen. We're in with like eight pounds on yeah. this, you know, everything. You know exactly. Like yeah. you're never really, and you might have like a great third deadlift, right? You know, you put 15 on, you thought you're going to put five, but yeah, yeah. you know exactly going in. Yeah.